B here, and welcome back to Integrated Physics and Chemistry. In our last lesson, we talked about work. I'm guessing that some of you are not fans. After all, work is hard. It makes us tired. Is there any way to make it easier? Actually, science to the rescue! Today, we'll delve into the world of simple machines, which are all around us and have the amazing ability to make work easier. Once you know how to leverage their power, work may not seem so exhausting. But before we get started, let's look at our goals for this lesson. By the end, you'll be able to explain how machines manipulate force and distance to make work easier, and give examples of the six types of simple machines. think all machines have in common, and why do we use them? Consider some of the terms we've learned recently, such as force and work. Take a moment to record some ideas about machines in your notes. Pause the video and come back when you're ready. Simple machines, like this screwdriver, make our work easier. That probably doesn't come as a surprise. But did you know that machines don't actually decrease the total amount of work we have to do? To understand what they do instead, let's review the equation we used to calculate work. Work equals force times distance. So if I need to lift this heavy box with a force of 20 newtons up to a platform that is 2 meters high, that's going to require 40 joules of work. Unfortunately, there's no getting around that. It will take 40 joules of work to get our box onto the platform, even if I make use of a machine. So, if we can't change the 40 joules of work, how could we make this easier? When looking at the work equation, what do you think makes the job more challenging? The force required or the distance? It's usually the amount of force. Remember that force and distance are inversely proportional, so if we wanted to find a way to decrease the amount of force needed to lift the box, what would need to happen to distance? It would have to increase. Instead of lifting the box straight up onto the platform, we could push it up a ramp. A ramp is a type of simple machine known as an inclined plane. The box would end up in the same place, but we would be spreading the work out over a longer distance, which decreases the amount of force necessary. We still have to put in 40 joules of work, but if the ramp is 4 meters long, this means we only need to apply 10 newtons of force instead of 20. This is how simple machines make work easier, by decreasing the amount of force needed. For thousands of years, humans have utilized simple machines, sometimes without even understanding the physics behind them. They simply knew that their work was easier when done this way. A simple machine is any mechanical device that changes either the direction or the magnitude of the applied force. The ancient Greek philosopher Archimedes, whom you may remember from our buoyancy lesson, was the first person to scientifically classify and describe six types of simple machines. The lever, wheel and axle, pulley, inclined plane, wedge, and screw. We've already looked at an example of an inclined plane, or ramp, and now we'll look at some examples of the other five types. But before we do, I want you to see if you can identify any examples of simple machines that you use or see in your daily life. Pause the video and record some ideas. One of the oldest types of machines is a lever. This simply consists of a bar that rests on a fulcrum. Putting a downward force on one end results in an upward force on the other. Perhaps the most fun example of a lever is a seesaw. The downward weight on one end sends the passenger on the other end flying upward. 
but more practical examples of levers include scissors, wheelbarrows, and tweezers. For a pair of pliers, a small effort force applied over a long distance on the handle produces a larger load force that only moves a small distance on the other side. This diagram shows the setup of a wheel and axle. How do you think this type of machine could make work easier? Notice that the wheel is much larger than the axle. We'll have to turn the wheel the full distance of its circumference, but doing so will only turn the axle around its much smaller circumference. Remember the rule though, increasing distance decreases force so we won't have to turn with as much force as we would have otherwise. Can you think of any examples of machines that would make use of a wheel and axle? A car chassis may come to mind, but a much simpler wheel and axle device is actually a doorknob. The circumference of the knob that you turn is much larger than the circumference of the latch mechanism inside, this means it only requires a small amount of force to turn the knob and unlatch the door. Have you ever ridden a ski lift? They make use of another simple machine, a pulley. A large bull wheel attached to a haul rope is used to transport skiers up the mountain against gravity. These pulleys are powered by electricity. But some pulleys, such as the ones found on sailboats, can be powered manually as well. A single pulley will only change the direction of force, but adding multiple pulleys together increases the distance of the rope. And what happens when we increase distance? Force decreases and our work feels easier. Another type of simple machine is a wedge, and the best example of a wedge is an axe. What would you likely use an axe for? Commonly, they're used to split large logs of wood. The challenge in splitting a wooden log is not only the force required, but also the direction of the force. A wedge, such as an axe, allows you to apply a downward force, but get a sideways output force as a result. As always with machines, the distance you move the axe will be much greater than the distance the axe moves the wood, but this is still a useful trade-off. The last type of machine we'll look at today is a screw. You may have used screws and screwdrivers when assembling furniture. A screw is simply an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder. The purpose of the inclined plane is to increase the distance of movement, which decreases the required force. After all, you may have noticed that when using a screwdriver, the total distance you turn the tool is much greater than the horizontal distance that the screw is moved into the wood. This is why it feels easier. You probably could not have pushed a solid piece of metal into that wood otherwise. Do you remember all six types of simple machines we learned today? See if you can identify each of the machines shown. Pause the video and fill in the missing names in your notes. Did you remember all of them? Add or correct any answers that you need to in your notes now. As we went through the lesson today, we learned that simple machines make work easier by decreasing the amount of force that we have to apply. However, remember the trade-off. If we want to decrease our applied force, we'll have to apply that smaller force over a longer distance. The total amount of work will be the same either way. Machines simply allow us to spread that work out over a longer distance, which makes it feel easier. Speaking of work, what do you think you need to have in order to be able to do work? Did you guess energy? That's right! Next time, we'll talk specifically about energy and how it allows us to do work. Until then, remember, the universe is vast and full of surprises, so never stop exploring. I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.